we're students in this. We have to be a collective. You know, I said this in one of the spaces, you know, that, that we've, we've been trained that we are not a monolith, you know, and what a monolith is, is a, a body working together, uniform that's in sync. And what do we talk about being on code? I say galvanize. I, you know, we, we, we talk about being together, but how are we going to be together if we're not a monolith? doesn't mean we're going to always agree with one another 100% of the time. But what is going to happen if we're working together, it's harder to infiltrate. It's harder to infiltrate, you know, a a body that's working in unison. But when we're all over the place and all going in different directions and shit, then that's easy for people to infiltrate, just like they've been trying to do with, with certain names and initials and acronyms and leaders and who's this and that. None of that shit really matters right now, you know, and we need to pay less attention to whether it's a group, whether it's a lineage, whether we we've got a goal. We've got a goal and we've got to stick to that goal. And the most fruitful part of that goal has been coming from the West with CJEC and everybody else that's been falling in line with that and trying to put things together in line with that, with their individual states. And everybody is way behind. Everybody is way behind. But see, you can't even get everybody to go see what CJAC is doing to go do what they they still want to do. These 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 minimalistic and I'm not trying to dog anybody in other states, but they want to do these things. And they're not even trying to go with the blueprint of CJAC. Get to where you can get with the blueprint there before you start trying to do something else in another state and make it work another way. We're, we're great improvisationists. I mean, black people, we're the most creative people out. But why recreate something that's already working? I don't understand why you'd want to recreate something that's already working, that's already into law. It doesn't make any sense. So when you see these people that, oh, I don't want to be this. I want to identify as this. I want to identify. Dude, you see what's on their bill. What worked? American Freeman is on the CJEC bill, on the CJEC law. So why would you want to be something else over here? It doesn't make any sense. That part. Uh, Who we got there? Is that Lytle? Yeah. Ex Negro, you're an ex Negro and ex Freeman Lytle. Uh, uh-uh, I don't quite understand that. Wait, what did you convert to? Oh, you oh, cause see, you're black. Okay. Uh, ex Negro, hold on one second. I can explain that if you want me to. <laughs> I'd like it. It's uh, I'm just quoting Don, uh, Cornell West when he had a conversation with those uh, radical and asking this when he was talking about his situation at Harvard, how he had a lot of black folks at Harvard, and then. Um, I think it was some, I guess some time in the, in the mid 2010s, he started questioning him about the amount of black people there. They tried to give him a percentage. He said, no, I'm talking about ex-Negroes. And they immediately knew who he was talking about. He wasn't talking about anybody from West Africa. He wasn't talking about anybody from Haiti or Jamaica. He was talking about descendants of slaves, ex-Negroes. And he, and, I, and, I, and he said ex-Negroes because, as we know, uh, they passed legislation in the past to push Negro and Oriental out of law, out of federal law. So that's why I said that that's like that. Appreciate that explanation. I, I just didn't know. I was ignorant. Other other, other people might have known, um, and I I just didn't know. But but yeah, go ahead and cook, brother. What you got to say on is the diaspora helpful or hurtful to freemen, aka Black Americans, aka FBA, aka DOS, whatever you identify. I'm not. I'm trying to be concise. He only give me a certain amount of characters to fuck with. So, and I I, I had to. I got to work with what I work with. You know what I'm saying? So I work with freemen. So. Yeah, let, let let us know there, and then anything else that you want to add, go ahead and do your thing. I was going to say, no. They've been, they have not been helpful. They've been harmful. They've been overall net negative. And that's come from somebody who has really close friends with, uh, with West Africans who grew up here in the United States. Overall, net negative. Harmful. That's all I had to say. Appreciate that. Appreciate I mean... I think the sentiment has been pretty much the same. You know, we, we've had some individual credits, uh, you know, what, what they used to say to us, you've been a credit to your race. They've been a credit to the diaspora. But then as a collective, you know, and even the crazy thing is like the ones that we have had uh, that have not been, you know, uh, American freemen or, or native black Americans or something. We've had some, uh, you know, people from the diaspora that came along before, let's say, they couldn't even get their native people on board. Have you ever noticed that? I, I guess I look at things a little bit differently. Like, like uh, 
like where, I, don't, I forgot where Harry Belafonte was from or, you know, some of these other people that were they were they were on the ground and, I, and they, they were notable notables based on other things, too. But like some of these people that were from other places, um, you know, the Bahamas or Haiti or Trinidad or whatever, you ever notice how they couldn't even globally get their own people on board, like even if they were in the country, they they would be on code. But uh, whatever their nationality was like, OK, I mean, and that 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 went back a little bit further. But let's just say. Currently, you know, we've been dealing with this situation with 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 Mr. Campbell in, in Miami. And, and we know he is of Bahamian descent. So does he does he fuck with people from the Bahamas and tell them motherfuckers that are disrespectful down in South Florida, you know, to be respectful to Native Black Americans? Have he has he worked on getting them on code? Because I know he fucks with them, you know, and 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 and, and does, does a lot of shit with them. But does he get them on code and be be tell them to be respectful to us, or is he just as disrespectful, you know, uh, with them as he is to us? Because because Luke has been or Luther, Luther has been very disrespectful to freedmen, and we see that coming from his people. Well, why doesn't he get his people on code? But is it because he's not on code? Freedman sister for life. You ain't got to necessarily answer that, but yeah, I just want to know. I want to know that too. <laughs> but go ahead. You answered your own question. <laughs> um, you already know how me and you talk. So mm -hmm. the thing is, he's Bohemian and Jamaican. Obviously, two different identities here mm -hmm. in in Florida. Um, I remember a Twitter space. I think someone tried to ask him that. And, you know, it's hard for somebody to really ask him something mm -hmm. without him having the aneurysm. And <laughs> it didn't sound as though he had that lifeline to his own group of people. Okay. Now, I don't know if now, again, he could have been just talking a whole bunch of shit because he got a Twitter space. Right. right, right. I think sometimes we need to except the fact when we see bullshit is bullshit and we already know what he does. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to take everything that he says, even it may sound good for face value, but um, there was a comment made. And it sounded as though he didn't really have that because if you remember, he does this we thing. So when the topic is specifically about us, because, of course, he put the title in and he will have a Twitter space go on for hours and he will switch up the title like three or four damn times. Right. Think about us. So when he's in these conversations, um, he's saying we and he is trying to cloak himself in us. So you never hear about. Yeah, I may have been born and raised here. I may have assimilated myself in your culture or whatever the culture in Florida. Um, but ethnically, this is where my family comes from or my two sides of my family. You don't mm -hmm. hear that level of him being genuine. I agree with that. For instance, like what Tony DeLarmy does. Um, his is more of, well, we got to get this. We this. And we were seeing a lot of that, obviously, in his discussions. I don't even know if I want to call it discussion because I feel like it has to be mutual and have some level of respect of the topic where he will control what goes on, right? He right. meets you, you off, whatever. So I don't find it to be a discussion. Um, but I don't think it's, let me go talk to my people. Let me right. call people out in the level of what we see, for instance, what Tony DeLarmy will do. Um, we don't see that. Mm -hmm. People were like, well, why is he talking about us, blah, blah, blah. But then he never said he wasn't Haitian. Right. And sometimes you can't get caught up in when someone says the we because you realize what he's saying with Luke. Luke don't call his people out. Even if he did and did this because I guess he's trying to muddy up some kind of campaign at some point. I don't trust it. He was trying to throw out some, you know, names 
which had nothing to do with anything political in terms of the people it had everything to do with money and the music industry when he okay. was trying to that, i was like what the hell that mean i don't have shit to do with us mm-hmm. um, and that one sister was on there that people were calling her out and i think she came on sir's um twitter space so there's something going on there that was the one when they were talking about the warehouse and they think there were some people up in there in is her that, warehouse is that the nikki could be. It was yeah. something like that. Yeah. So um, I, I don't find him genuine, you know, and, and, and I hate that we are in these um, environments, and, and I mean social media, where we see these characters, because that's what they are. They're, they're characters that they have created. And um, when they may be seeing something of truth, it's hard to... Um, accept it mm-hmm. if they're telling the truth because they're always full of shit. That part you get caught up in this black person telling you stuff and you realize somebody else is pulling them strings. And I had to bring up about London Breed, right? And you know I talked to you about her, mm-hmm. and I said no, them strings that Pelosi has is very tight on a lot of these black politicians here, right? You know, and I said yeah. That sister, girl, whatever, like I just say to my aunt, but is she genuine? And even the person I was talking to, she was like, yeah, she all about the mother folks, meaning those elites, not us. Right. It was the same thing like with him. He could say whatever, but it's like, oh, okay. All right. Next. He, you know, I haven't seen anything popped up, maybe because I'm not seeing anything from him. Um, It's a lot of clout chasing. um, And there's other people that jump on. And as I stated uh, not that long ago, um, it's getting really exhausting that we have to keep on having these discussions that are not making sense. Mm -hmm. Um, How many times do we have to explain to you what the hell American Freedman is? Right. How many times? Why they put this in here in that bill and whatever? Did you fucking read the damn bill? No. And, And we know that. We now know that they don't read the bills and for them to for us to continue to give for us to continue to allow them to take our time up and keep rehashing it. I think that is crazy for us. I think we need to move past it. They're not reading these bills. No, at some point we're, we're going to have to. And, you know, obviously, and I'll, I'll just speak on the California family here. You know, we appreciate the partnership that we still have with everyone that we initially connected with some years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we all have that understanding of each other. And as I stated, I think it was in Naheem's space that you got something going on where you are. We're going to support you. We're students in this. And that's what I expressed to this young sister. I didn't, I knew she was young, but she said she's 27. Um, but she's like really deep into community political stuff that's going on. And so um, there's some other people involved that's going to be at this event with her. But um, I expressed to her about actually all of you. And um, on live, she started looking at Be the Powers um, YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I said, she was talking about these books and some Something called, I never heard of it. I'm going to look it up. It's called Z, like Zebra Library. Mm -hmm. And apparently she said she get all these books. She was showing us like a whole library of James Baldwin, all these other people and free books. And as long as it has a PDF, you actually see the full book. You can read it. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, that's cool. She said, what books y'all like? Because I'm looking at, you know, whatever. And she's just showing us. And this is just how politically driven, um, community driven she is at her age. And so I brought up Be the Power and I brought up about um, particularly the bloody shirt, that book. Mm -hmm. So she said, oh, I'm going to check them out, you know. And I said, this is how we build. We share information with each other, but at the same time, we have to be humble enough to know that we're students in this. I agree with that. And I think any of us could be a bit sensitive when we are 
involved with something. Mm -hmm. um, and you see how people dissect something or criticize, not being constructive in their criticism, but criticize and don't know enough to know enough. Right. It is frustrating to see people not just sit back and listen. And right. then from that, learn. And then from that, did you comprehend it? And then from that, take that at which you learn and comprehend and apply it. It, it. It's not that hard to do that. And it just makes me wonder, as our question before, how serious are you to be in this space? Because all this other stuff is starting to get real silly. And at some point, we are going to have to, I mean, obviously the work is still being done, right? Because I think we're making each other accountable for that. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no going back. It really isn't at this point. Um, it really is about us finishing this work. But at some point, we just got to say, fuck it. Put your deuces up, middle finger, whatever the hell you need to do. Mm -hmm. And not even have these discussions because... We have to trust the fact that you have people who are agents of chaos, who are people who just want to create just something. We're students in this. I literally have Twitter up on the computer. I'm doing this through my tablet, but I'm looking at the computer. Mm -hmm. And why? And I don't know. I guess because of Marcus Garvey, it says trending Jamaicans. Then underneath that, under music, hashtag free R. Kelly. Then right, hashtag right. She-Hulk. Who the fuck want to see She-Hulk? I, I saw the commercial now. I said, that's some dumb shit. But anyway. I, 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 you know, I didn't know if it was a cartoon. No. It's, if it was a, it's a real yeah. fucking movie. It is. And, you, you got know, a bitch walking around, uh, uh, just a green bitch. I'm like, is this Shrek? <laughs> what is this? What is this? It, it doesn't even look right. But, you, I mean, you know, the point is how all this, how quick people can be t discussing something. And now all of a sudden it's trending. Yeah. And what were we all talking about the day before? Reparations. Because we were trying to figure out, was it reparations or reparations now? We saw reparations. This is why I just went out and just started hashtagging stuff yesterday on purpose. <laughs> At some point, we have to be very strategic. And Shannon, I feel that you know me well enough in our discussions in what I'm about to say. We have to be very strategic of how we approach some of these things, just like the simple, you know, phrase, choose your battles wisely. Um, mm. Some of this shit is real silly. Right. And, and, and I'm going to say it because I can say it. And just being on this end, it's just like when people was talking about AWS and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, but was you ever in a chapter? Did you ever engage when you No, but blah, 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 this happened. Cause so you telling me you a fan of a YouTube channel. Right. You ain't never engaged in nothing else. You don't know nothing else. You just know YouTube, right? Yeah. It's, it's getting to that point, the same kind of argument or defense of, but you're not even involved with this shit. So why are you talking? Yeah. Why don't you just learn or just say, hey, what are y'all doing? I want to learn more. And even if you don't feel confident in yourself to engage or I'm, I don't know about people in my area, well, then educate yourself. Sure. Like, what is wrong with that? And I, you know, because we're collectively not conditioned. We're conditioned the opposite way to not politically engage with one another. And it's about us. I mean, even to the point I hate to say this, and I know I'm not the only one. I think I'm grateful for a lot of the things that we have learned over the last few years due to this, I'll say, contemporary reparations movement mm -hmm. in the level of education we have gained from it. Um, even to the point where I know, you know, I joked and said, you know, I could tell because he ain't got he got that non FBA hairline. You know, mm -hmm. we laugh about it. Right. And even to a point, some of us, we, you know, we're looking at people that way. Mm -hmm. And it's not to be mean. People look at us like this all the damn time. That part. Even when I had went to Ghana, they knew the damn difference. 
when I went to Togo and Benin, which they were like French kind of speaking in Ghana was different, mm-hmm. but it was different. Right. And I was like, even the person we went on the trip with born and raised a uh, Jamaican and he lived in Atlanta. So he's very Marcus Garvey ish, literally even to this day, I've seen him saying some things, okay. but even I don't know how old they were and he will travel there all the time. So I don't know if they were familiar with him mm-hmm. and we're at the Elmina um, slave dungeon, mm-hmm. which is the main uh, slave dungeon. They will always show you mm-hmm. um, even though there's many of them and the person starts saying something and Africa for Africans. What is that? And was calling him out. So it got to a point where there was going to be this back and forth exchange. And it's clear that we're a black American because we don't really look like you. Right. Especially some of us. I'm, I mean, I'm lighter. Right. So I you know I'm not from there, you know. Right. right. Um, but they can tell. And how they actually came at him was interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. It wasn't all oh, my brother and all this stuff. The person was criticizing him, provoking him. And the person that uh, who was uh, facilitating everything, he's the type he will go at people. I've seen him do this on um, online. Okay. And so it's not like, you know, he's just going to bite his tongue kind of or whatever you call it. Right. And some people's like, no, nah, don't worry about it. You know, we got things to do because we we were scheduled to be there. Right. And I was like, they ain't even accepting you. You look more close to them than we do to them. And see, here's my problem with this. You're talking about just an individual situation with a person who actually is from there, but is no longer accepted there. How the Who's hell are we supposed to go over there and get accepted? Yeah, he's more connected, but he's been there. I think he's been doing this almost 12 years. So he'll go there twice a year. So it wasn't like these people didn't know who he was and bringing people with him, which is really... I wish really I would crazy. take my fat ass over there. That day, boy. I and and, no and because the person saw it as, well, you're not us. Well, right. him being Jamaican is more connected. And there is this affinity with um, I, maybe some, but Jamaicans to Ghana in particular. So that person didn't care. He just saw him as you're not one of us. Right. And it was just interesting to watch this. Now, mind you, this is 2017. So then fast forward, get into this, you know, feet kind of wet in this movement, learn more, blah, blah, blah. And we see what we're seeing now. And I have to remind people here, we don't have like a huge influx of all these different um, Caribbean or continental um, immigrant groups in the Bay Area, like you see in the um, on the East Coast, mm-hmm. in some parts of the South, right? But you know that they're there. I think, if anything, we probably that I've seen here, you definitely have a lot of Ethiopians. They mm-hmm. stick to themselves. They have their restaurants, but they stick to themselves. And you may have some Somalians, and some people don't know the difference unless I guess they tell you. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, they know the difference when they see us, we see them. Mm-hmm. And I was a little shocked of the demeanor or the treatment he got from this person who was young. Mm-hmm. He didn't see him as, oh, you my brother. And so now when we see people here, it's like, okay, just like this whole thing you're talking about, the diaspora, are they helpful or hurtful? Well, yeah, the collective, you know, you now have to question that. Are you really an ally? Are you really helping us? Do you understand your your role in being an ally in your lane? Um, which I'm glad of the advocacy that we have through um, Dr. Javon Lewis, who is Jamaican. He is married to a freedman. He had told us that a long time ago. Um, but he made it very clear. And is he one of, of a small group? I don't know. He could be. Um, 
but I've kind of just seen some folks where I'm like, do you understand what's going on? If I'm talking about something in terms of politics that affects black Americans, I do not want you saying to me, oh, well, the police It's always, well, the police, we're not talking about the police. Mm-hmm. Well, they don't know the difference. Oh, well, yes, they do. They know the difference when they see and hear you. Right. They know the difference because you make sure they know the difference. You know, it's just, I've seen that. Well, we're all, no, we're not. Stop saying that. That part. I agree with that. We're students in this.